RegTech for six-year-olds. Everything you want to know about RegTech, but just didn't ask. <laughs> this is RegTech for six-year-olds. Conversations at the intersection between regulation and technology. My name is Danny Lauer from Request, and this is our RegTech as a problem solver episode. If you're new to the YouTube, uh, YouTube channel for Request, do hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, be sure to hit like. For this episode, I'm joined by Brian Walsh, who's the CEO of Raytig, going to explain to us a little bit about the problems that RegTech solves and the problems that RegTech doesn't solve, well, yet at least. Brian, talk to us a little bit about RegTech as a cost center or how firms, can, how firms view reg, uh, RegTech in terms of whether it's a benefit or, or how much of a drag it is on their bottom line. Yeah, so I think most firms would view RegTech as, as primarily a cost center. It's not affecting the bottom line in a direct way that it's going to help you make more sales. Granted, bringing in a technology may be uh, less expensive than having an awful lot of manual processes from not having a technology, but primarily it would be seen as a cost center and, and not necessarily something that is going to add overall value to the business beyond what you could say about increasing consumer confidence in the overall industry, which would kind of rise the tide for everyone. But from an individual company's perspective, uh, I find that most companies view RegTech as, as a cost center. And of course, you, you, in addition to maybe doing things less costly in another way, some of the costs that it saves would hopefully be around being more comprehensive and better in how you do your compliance and then removing some of your compliance risk and uh, got a bit of a cost around a fine or an admin sanction or something like that. So I said this is our problem solver episode. I'm interested to know about the types of problems that RegTech already solves and solves very well. What would be the ones off the top of your head, Brian? So the kind of uh, things that you're going to get from buying a, a solution uh, rather than doing everything manually is that you're going to have a centralized system that is going to do the processing for your regulation. So the kind of decision points uh, will be made as part of the implementation of the system around how your particular business is going to report or do the compliance reporting that's required for the regulation. And that logic will be built into a centralized system. It's not Excel. It's going to be coded and, and audited and logged. So you will have made that decision once up front, and every quarter as you're doing your reporting, the data will just continue to flow through. And typically, so, so it'll keep your data. It will store it in a way that you can retrieve it, and it'll timestamp what you've done with a, with a thumbprint or a paper trail so you can, you can demonstrate compliance and who complied and how they complied. Exactly. No, it's going, it's going to log all of the actions that the users have taken. It's going to say Danny logged in, Danny produced his Annex 4 reporting, someone else signed it off, and then it was sent to the regulator. And it should have enough of a trail. Like one of the difficult things to do um, if you're doing things manually is data linearity about where did my data originate from and how was it modified. That's the big thing that the regulator keeps asking. And if you have a good software system, it should have all that track that should be able to say, this data came in from this, um, from this outside entity. It was modified by Danny in this way. He changed these values. Ultimately, this was rolled up and sent on to the regulator. Yeah, and there's, I think there's two, two pieces that feed into that. There's firstly the increasing complexity of the regulatory system and the fact that rule books do not get smaller. They only get bigger and more complicated, allied to a regulator approach that puts more emphasis on enforcement and to be credibly there enforcing uh, the regulations that exist to act as a deterrent for all wrongdoing. Um, and then, uh, of course, what we see at the moment is an increasing focus on individual accountability. So there's more emphasis and more onus on individuals and firms to comply and the rules they've got to comply with and the rule books are more complicated. So any help you get from a, a, a software solution that makes your de ability to demonstrate compliance uh, comprehensive is, is got to help. Exactly. And the software system should be helping that person sign off by giving them appropriate reports and at the right level for them to be able to say that they can have a view and say, well, the process was carried out correctly, that I am aware of any breaches that occurred and I'm signing off on those breaches. And it, it, it should be a lot easier for them to do that through reporting inside the system than they would if they were just getting a lot of Excel spreadsheets or someone was coming to them and explaining to them you know, what, what has gone on. Yeah, and you see some great reg tech solutions in the areas of AML, uh, and other compliance with things like um, you know market abuse regulations, really there to monitor what's going on and, and to to raise flags and, and they're pretty sophisticated systems as well using AI. Yeah. Whatever. Absolutely, and there, there's a scale that you can achieve with a proper software system that you just can't achieve with without. So if you're trying to collate data through Excel or you're getting data from an awful lot of different sources and manually trying to bring it all together, 
the, the scale that you can achieve in your business is going to be quite limited. And okay, we said it was a cost center, but if the regulatory reporting is starting to hinder your ability to push the volumes of business through, um, that, that is going to start impacting the bottom line quite, quite significantly. So the yeah, system absolutely. should give you scale. Well, I know from engaging with firms, and you will have found this too, Brian, that, that I think the default today when they have a problem that needs solving, a compliance problem, a regulation problem, the default is to think, what is the tech solution that I can get to help me to do this, rather than to look at something that's manual or, or uh, spreadsheet-based or, or something like that. But there are, of course, problems out there that RegTech hasn't got to yet. What would you say are the primary amongst them, and, and when will we get there, or will, will we ever get there? I think the, the main problems that I see with, with outstanding RegTech solutions is that they're entirely focused on the output. So from the, the vendor's point of view, the vast majority of vendors are only looking at what needs to be sent to the regulator and the processes that need to be done to get the, the data in the format to go to the regulator. A lot of the times the input into the process is left at the financial service companies and um, that, that's their responsibility. So the vendor will come in and most vendors will say, here's my data template, fill in these data templates and the data will get into my system. And then when the data is in the system, I have these fancy calculations and will produce the XBRL reporting or whatever reporting is required. But it is that data, getting the data into the system is, is quite um, hard for companies that for most solutions I see at the moment. And uh, do you think it's something that you envisage there will be a solution to in the future or is it always will be thus that you, you kind of, as a regulated firm, you've got to take your data sources and slice and dice and manually intervene to get them in a format that you can plug into your regtech solution then to use your Crips kit or whatever it is and get your reporting into the regulator. So I think this, this is the, the company's responsibility. When I, when I talk to companies, um, so we said at the start that, that RegTech is kind of primarily seen as a cost center. And when I go out and talk to companies and try to sell uh, the software that we've built to companies, we push a lot of ancillary benefits that you can get from collating all of this data. There is a huge amount of regulation that uses very, very similar data. If you were to look at some of the trade reporting and SFTR, MIFR, um, all of those different trade reporting, they use a huge amount of the same data coming from the same sources. And if, you ha if the company had a view that they were going to collate all of that data before it went into these systems, or that the system was going to help collate the data for them, and they were going to use that for management reporting, for various kinds of other benefits, for helping them do analysis for their sales channels, they could help solve that data problem themselves. But the company needs to start to realize that it is possible to get ancillary benefits from implementing RegTech solutions, if you look on it as a way of organizing your data. Yeah, I know, and certainly when I deal with firms, and I'm sure you've found this, when it comes to regulation and compliance, the immediate uh, problem is where the focus is. So I need to file this, I need to have a person doing this role, and it's a hassle and it's a cost. And actually, uh, when, when I work with firms, we try and step back and say, what, what is the benefit of this? What is the objective that the regulator is trying to achieve? Why do they want to do that? And what can you do as an organization to get the most out of this and get some benefit, whether it is through you know, streamlining your distribution process or understanding your costs or whatever it is. And actually, if you view it slightly differently, uh, then you can find not only are you able to comply with your regulatory obligations, but you're able to extract something out of the, the exercise that you've done that you can use, whether it be for more management information, um, to run your business in a smarter way, or understand your distribution channels. And it's that key just to step back and understand uh, that I think uh, when I see firms perform well when it comes to RegTech and, and other solutions, that's the bit that they add that really, uh, really makes them stand out compared to their peers. Exactly. And I think getting your data in order will make it cheaper for you to, um, to comply with future regulations because the data is going to be reused. If you start to get your data in order just over time, getting more structure there will make it cheaper for you to, to solve the future regulatory needs. And I think one of the main things that I, that I see talking to companies, and the reason that this isn't more widespread, I find is largely that they, they just don't think it's possible. They haven't seen a, a, a data, they haven't seen the use of regulatory technology to, to help them uh, get their data in order and to get those ancillary benefits. So I think they, they should just be aware that it is possible to do that. And that is something that they should start to focus on. Okay, let's wrap it up there for this episode of RegTech for Six-Year-Olds, our problem solver episode. I guess to summarize, we'd say the problems that RegTech already solves are really around documenting and evidencing how you've complied, that ability to audit and paper trail, 
whether it's um, reporting requirements or things like marketing for mon monitoring for AML or, or market abuse, excellent tools there already from the perspective of RegTech solutions. When it comes to problems that exist that maybe there's more to do, it's usually around data, data quality and consistency. But I think firms that do well are the ones that step back and, and say, well, how can I make this work for me? What data could I get that uh, will help, for example, from a management information perspective? And how, how we can make this more than just a cost center, something that actually adds a little bit of value to the business. Of the Thanks again for your contribution, Brian. Great to have you on uh, RegTech for six-year-olds. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, do hit like. If you're not a subscriber already to the Equest YouTube channel, hit subscribe. We'll catch you next time on RegTech for six-year-olds.